Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to Dale Chanel's 48th World, where we do Bible study, reading of the daily word in whatever book, chapter we're in. Make sure you please subscribe to my channel, tell other people about my channel so they can come over and get some Bible studying, uh, dialoguing in with me. We're still on the book of Genesis. We're going to be reading from Genesis 12 through Genesis 16. Okay, so we're going to get right on into it. The first subtopic is the call of Abram. That's chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out for Haran. He took his wife, Sarah, or Sari, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people that they had acquired. Excuse me. In Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, or Canaan, Canaan. And they arrived and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at she Shechem. At that time the Canaanites were in the land, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who appeared to him. From there, he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Aya, or, well, yeah, Aya, or Aya on the east, where he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Abraham in Egypt. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sahara, or Sarah, which is spelled S A R I, or Sari, maybe Sari, we'll go with that one. I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and, and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that she was a very, very beautiful woman, and when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her sake, and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, uh, men servants and maid servants and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious disease on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Saria. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me, he said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. <laughs> then uh, Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way. Excuse me. Uh, with his wife and everything he had. I'm sorry, guys. I'm reading this pretty late in the wee hours in the morning, which is 2.40 a.m. Please excuse me. Um, And basically, I just wanted to say, you know, I don't understand why Abram, which will be Abraham before we finish uh, the book of Genesis, 
why he felt he needed to lie. Uh, if you really believe in the Lord, you know, you shouldn't have any fear of persecutors or people that are haters. Or that are evil. Um, but fear does strike man as well as one man. And it does take a whole nother story of its own when we let it feed and fester in us. Because we're going to tell the truth. It's going to be what it is. It's not going to change no matter how many times you ask. Uh, but I just felt Abram should have been a little bit more uh, knowledgeable and felt that the Lord would protect him no matter what. But again, we have to start with our mother's milk before we can get to cereal being put in the milk to keep us a little bit more fortified. That's just an analogy I'm making between, you know, our trust and our faith that we should have in the Lord on a daily basis. But sometimes we get into ourselves and we get um, frustrated we get antsy. And, you know, just being human, we get scared. So, with um, Abram's lie, <coughs> the Lord punished um, Pharaoh and put all this, well, put a plague on him in a sense of, you know, creating such hostility. And inflicting, you know, diseases on Pharaoh and his household, you know, because of the lie that Abram had told that Saria was his sister instead of just point out telling him that that's his wife. Okay. And let the Lord handle everything else. But that's how things go sometimes. Uh, but God don't like ugly. God don't like our uh, lies. And I'm sure Abram would be doing some repenting and trusting and leaning on God's understanding instead of his own understanding of what he think people may do to him uh, negatively. So we move out of there. We go to Abraham and Lot separate. This chapter 13 we're in. So Abraham went up from Egypt to Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went went with him. Abram and became very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. From the Negev he went from place to place until he became until he came to Beth, Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Aya, Aya, where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together, and quarreling arose between Abr Abram's herdsmen and the herdsmen of Lot. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abraham said to Lot, I'm sorry, Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between our herdsmen and mine or your herdsmen and mine, for we are brothers. It is not the whole land before you. It's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go, if you go to the straight, I'll go to the left. No, I'm sorry. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Okay, so he's like, whichever you want to do, vice versa, or how I said it. But let's be on what? Excuse me. Let's be on one accord with one another. Okay. So then Lot looked up and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt toward Zora, Zora, Zora. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out towards the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, Canaan 
while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Okay. We're not talking about the women this time. We're talking about the men doing ungodly things that the Lord detested in Sodom. Okay. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offsprings like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abraham moved his tents and went to live near the great tree of Mamre at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. Okay, we're on chapter 14, Abraham rescues Lot. Okay, at this time, Am Raphael, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elazar, Kedorla, Kedor, La Amir, king of Elam, and the title king of Gim went to war against Barah, Bira, king of Sodom, Brisha, king of Gomorrah. Shanab, king of Adma, she member, king of Zeboan, and king Bela, that is Zor. All these latter kings joined forces in the valley of Siddam, the South Sea is what it's called. For 12 years, they have been subject to Kedar Amir, but in the 13th year, they rebelled. In the 14th year, Kedar Amir and the kings allied with him went out and defeated the Raphites in astral Karanam. So basically, we got a war going on back and forth between these 12, in these 12 years with these latter kings. Um, and it just goes on about the war that's between them and the different uh, negative things they're doing, sinning against the Lord. Okay, and that's the route really. Uh, chapter 14 through uh, chapter one, well, chapter 14 verse 1 through verse 10. Okay, and then we pick up where it says, now the valley of Sidon was full of tar pits and when the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some of the men fell into them and the rest fled to the hills. The four kings seized all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their food, then they went away. They also carried off Abram's nephew Lot and his possessions since he was living in Sodom. One who had escaped came and reported to this to Abram, the Hebrew. Now Abram was living near the great trees of Mamre, the Amorite, a brother of Eshol and Anar, all of whom were allied with Abram. When Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out uh, the thir 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. During, during the night, Abram divided his men to attack them and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Haba and north of Dachamus. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and possessions together with women and other people. After Abram returned from defeating Kedorla Amir and the king's allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shavez, a Shavi, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was he was priest of God. Uh, most high, and he blessed Abram, saying, Bless me, Abram, by God's most high, creator of the heaven and earth, and blessed be God's most high, who delivered your enemies into your hands. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. For Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand 
to the Lord God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and have taken an oath that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the thong of a sandal, so that you would never be able to say, I made Abram rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me to Anar, Eshgal, and Mamre. Let them have their share. Okay. Uh, we're on chapter 15, God's covenant with Abraham. After this, the word, well, I'm saying Abram. <laughs> Abram, okay. God's covenant with Abram. Chapter 15, verse 1, we're reading. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. For Abram said, O servant Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Esau or Dachimus. And Abraham said, or Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Shandians to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, O servant Lord, uh, how can I know what I will gain? How can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a helper, a goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then, then birds of prey came down on the carcasses where Abraham or Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated for a hundred years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites have not reached its full measure. When the sun had set, when darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pit pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said to your descendants, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great rivers or to the great rivers, the Euphrates, the land of the Kenites and Kenazets, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, uh, Raphites, Armenites, Canaanites, Gergesites, and Jezebites, uh, Jezebusites. Okay, then we'll go to our last and final chapter, which is on Hagar and Ishmael. Now, Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne, that's chapter 16, I'm reading for him, him no children, but she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarah said. So, or Sarah, yeah, Sarah said, so after Abraham, or Abram, I'm sorry, had been living in Canaan, Canaan, Canyon, 10 years, Sari, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sari said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. 
I put my servants in your arms, and now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your servant is in your hands, Abram said. Do what, whatever you think best. Then Sari mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sari, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sari. Uh, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now with child. You will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hands against him. Okay. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. She gave him, well, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me, for she said, I have not seen the one who sees me. This is why the whale was called Ber or Bear Laha Roy or Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abraham, or I'm sorry, Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had and bore. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. <coughs> okay, everyone, that's all we're going to be doing for tonight. We're going to pick up tomorrow and read um, the Covenant of Circumcision. That's chapter 17. Okay, look forward to being along with you uh, through this Bible study journey, journey, uh, journey, and we will talk more as days come ahead. Be good to one another, love on one another, and definitely read your Bibles on a daily basis and get to know the Lord and stay in love and in tune with what the Lord has prepared for us as his uh, disciples. Thank you so much and have a great night. Good night.